Hey guys, how you doing? Okay, um, yeah, this is going to be another Xbox pickups video. I picked up quite a few Xbox games the last couple of weeks, and I was waiting for a few to come through until I got them all, and then I just decided to do a video. I've got quite a few. I've got original Xbox, and I've actually got some 360 games as well, which is pretty rare for me. I've been picking up a fair few 360 games lately. I've been sort of going back looking at the old exclusives from way back and picking those up. Just, you know, trying to get some use out of my 360 more than anything because it hasn't been getting enough use. And, you know, I don't really, really want to play exclusives anyway. I don't really, you know, cross platform I am fussed because I've got my PlayStation 3 for that. So, yeah. But there you go. So, I'll, what I'll do is I'll start with the 360 because it's the smallest amount of games. So, the first one I got was. Dead or Alive 4, they're all complete, but they're in these plastic sleeves that Darren Walshock has been recommending, which are absolutely brilliant. So I won't take them out because it'd be a lot of aggravation. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. A really great game this one is, and that glare is terrible. Jesus, look at that sunlight. There you go. Yeah, I like this, I like it's really good. The only thing I've found is, and maybe it's just my ability because I'm not very good at the games, it's bloody hard. Number three on the original Xbox, I can play that no problem, but this one, it just kicks my ass. It's like as soon as the match starts, they just lay into you and start punching and kicking. And you don't even get a chance to press a button or work out what does what. And I'm on the floor and it's oh, extremely frustrating. But I must admit, it does look really, really nice. Lovely graphics. I still think you can put Dead or Alive 3 and Dead or Alive 4 side by side. And it'd be difficult to tell which one's running on which machine. You know, Dead or Alive 3 really has aged well for an old Xbox game. Especially since it's a launch title as well. It's excellent. So next one I got was Lost Planet, which if you saw my Saturday Night Special, you'll know what this is all about. And I'm playing this at the moment, and it's pretty damn good. It's getting a little tougher, but uh, the AI is still a bit dumb. But I mean, it's not a bad little game actually. When I first had it years ago, well, I didn't have it. I don't think I can't, I can't actually remember if I did actually own the game. I'm pretty certain I only ever played a demo. I might have bought the game. I, I, I don't know. But I remember playing the demo and getting stuck and it frustrated me and that's probably why I didn't buy the game, but I don't know, I can't remember. But anyway, I've got it now and so far so good, I'm enjoying it, it seems pretty decent, pretty reasonable game. Graphics, as I said in my gameplay, they look a bit outdated now, but still, it's still quite nice. And you know, the, the action element, I love just being able to run around and gun people down, it's great fun. So, Last weekend, I wanted to get an Xbox, an original Xbox, because I wanted to have a go at soft modding the machine myself, so I'd have a backup system. So, I decided to go down to the car boot, because it's still running, apparently it runs all, all year. So, I decided to go down to the car boot, knowing I could probably get one for a fiver. Unfortunately, the car boot is a lot smaller, because it's still technically winter. And so, there, there were only a couple of stalls then, the usual traders were there, and they've started upping their prices now, and doing proper eBay pricing, so... You're wasting your time. I mean, I'm not going to get an Xbox for a decent price from those people. The one in particular is a shame because he's a really good trader, a really nice bloke. But unfortunately, he's gone from doing car boot prices to eBay prices, and he's just priced himself out of the market. As far as I'm concerned, it's a real shame. And I managed to find one bloke with an Xbox, which is just sitting down there now. And I soft modded it, no problem at all, really easy, using the action replay with the memory card and Splinter Cell. And I can't believe how simple it is. I've never thought it'd be that easy. So I watched loads of videos beforehand and read tutorials and I was a bit confused and I was like, this is going to be complicated and I was like, oh, I don't know. And then I just thought, well, just give it a shot, see what it's like, see if you can do it. And, you know, it took a while to get to grips with how it all works, but once I understood it, dead easy. I mean, essentially, once you've downloaded the files and passed them over by using Action Replay onto the memory card, it's dead simple. You know, you just load up Splinter Cell, go into your save game and Bob's your uncle done it, just does it all for you. You've just got, you know, back everything up, install and it's done. It's, it's absolutely amazing. So I now have an extra soft modded machine as a backup, which is fantastic. So when I, anyway, the reason I'm telling you this is because when I was at the car boot, I found a couple of 360 games, and these were five pound each, and I wanted to take a punt on them because they're not games that I would normally play. But I've heard so much good stuff, I thought, well, I'm going to give it a shot. So first one, Mass Effect, and the other one is Mass Effect Two. So I got them for five pound each in excellent condition. The discs I've barely used. I think Mass Effect Two got a couple of marks on it, but. Yeah, they're absolutely spot on. Right, so okay. So I've been trying to play Mass Effect the first one. Now I knew that Mass Effect 1, from what I've read and heard, is more RPG based, and number 2 is a lot more action, like third person cover sort of based, which is more my kind of game really. But I wanted to play Mass Effect 1, I wanted to see if I could play RPGs, and I also wanted to see if I could get through the whole game, I, can, I know you can carry your character over to number 2, so it would have been made, made a lot more sense instead of just starting on number 2. 
and the only experience of Mass Effect I've ever had, I played the demo of Mass Effect 2 for the PlayStation 3. Thought it was bloody brilliant, loved it, and I really wanted to play some more. But I've got to be honest, I've been trying to play Mass Effect the first one, and I just can't get on with it. It's driving me crazy. It's just, I just don't know, man. If, if RPGs, I don't know if they are, but if that's a, a good example of an RPG, then Jesus Christ, I'm glad I don't play RPGs, because it was really winding me up. It's just like ridiculous things. Like I chose to be a soldier at the beginning, and yet, because I haven't levelled up my character, I can't use weapons properly. So you try and use a sniper off and it's all over the screen. And it's like, what the hell is this? What's the point? Then he like, decides to take cover when he feels like it. Most of the time he didn't want to take cover and I was getting really annoyed and get, kept dying and getting shot in the face. Oh, it's just, it was just so annoying and frustrating. And when you get to the, um, is it the Citadel, I think it's called. And you have to run back, run over there, run over there, run over there, run over there. You have a conversation with someone and he's like, Oh, I'll meet you in the tower. And you're like, all right. Then you have to find out it takes you about 10 minutes to run to the bleeding tower because you can't always run properly. You have to jog. And oh, it drove me crazy. It's so frustrating. And then when I eventually got onto the Normandy, uh, where I became a spectre, I got onto the Normandy and I spent a good half an hour, and I'm not lying, a good half an hour trying to work out how to navigate to another planet because it wasn't clear and obvious. I assumed that you had to go onto the star map and use a star map. But when I went to the star map, it just showed where I was at the Citadel and it didn't have anything indicate on the screen that you had to press X to come out of the star map and zoom up and then you get a whole galaxy and you can choose where you want to go. It took me half an hour to work that out. I mean, what is that? There's no map, no HUD thing, so you don't know where your objective is. You're sort of just running around. And then I found out if you press start, you go into the journal and the journal tells you where, sort of where you're supposed to go. I thought, this is crap. This is like Dark Age gaming. It's like they've totally gone backwards. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I've tried to stick with it, it's just drove me nuts. I got to the first planet that I went to, and I landed on the planet, went through a lot of dialogue with a lot of different characters. I met a guy in a bar, had a chat with him, and then I had to turn it off because it was getting late. So I came back the next day, and I found that apparently when you get onto this planet, for some reason the planet prohibits you to have an autosave feature. So I had to start right back on the Normandy again, come off the ship, go through the same dialogue again with, more, with the same characters that I'd already spoken to. I was just getting so frustrated and I got to the bar, I spoke to the alien, the alien says to me, oh, you know, they're turning over my office, can you go and take care of the commandos? And I'm like, yeah, no problem, I'll go and kill them for you. And then it said, I was like, well, where do I go? So I checked the journal, the journal says, go down to the lower level and there's an elevator that takes you up to his office. And I spent like an idiot an hour running around the bloody place trying to find this elevator and I couldn't work out where it was. Eventually I found on the far left of the level, there's a symbol that looked over a, a wall with a car on it. So I thought it was a car park. No, 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 that's all. You run through there, and that's where the elevator is. I eventually get in the elevator, up, the, up to the, the office, walk through the door, get challenged, obviously. I say, like, up yours, let's fight. And then what happens? Me and my two people get annihilated, because my man's not taking cover. They're coming around all over the place, flanking me. I can't fire a weapon because my character's shit, and he has no skill. And I just died, and I thought, you know what? I'm not restarting again and going through the same bleeding dialogue. So, yeah, it's just not for me at all. If that's what RPGs are like, then no, I'm definitely not an RPG gamer. Thank God I never, you know, never played RPG before. Now I know why. But at least I tried. It was worth a shot. It's kind of frustrating because I do want to play number two, but yeah, it's, it's a pain because I could just go, oh, screw it, and play number two. But as I say, you can't. You have to start from fresh. Then number one, you carry you have, carry your character from number one to number two, and that would have been better. But I just can't get on with it at all. I like the dialogue. I like a lot of story. I like the fact that you can choose your dialogue and interact, and that's brilliant, but this levelling up thing and the, the, all the little basic things that should be there, like a little hood thing to tell you where to go with the objective, with a little marker, you know, it's just obvious things, and it's just like, oh, it's so frustrating. I don't know, but as I say, I've never played an RPG, so it's you know completely fresh to me, and it, I don't like it at all, I really don't like it, so I won't be playing RPGs again, that's a definite, <laughs> I'll stick to the normal games, thanks. Oh. So right, yeah. So that's that. I have got another 360 game on the way. I'm waiting for the seller to send it to me, which is a bit of a shame. But I'm still waiting for that. But I'll be getting it hopefully the end of the week. So when it arrives, I'll do a video with like, or I'll combine it with other pickups as well. So I've got a few other things I've ordered as well. So yeah, those are the 360 games I've got so far. Now onto the original Xbox, which is quite honestly getting to be ridiculous because I'm buying too many. I'm getting a massive stack because of that entertainment. They're just so cheap. The stack up I showed you about a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, I'm still working through that. I was playing Dark Watch 
and I got quite close to the end and it's just starting to annoy me now and I'm getting a bit bored of it so I did I did start um, let me just check yeah it was one I bought last time wasn't it PsyOps the Mind Gate Conspiracy I've started playing that and that's really cool I like that game a lot so I'm going to try and play through that next and I've got a couple of others I need to play through and then I've got this brand new stack of games to play through as well so it's, it's yeah I've got to stop buying Xbox games for a bit and just play them. <laughs> I'm not the only one that's got stacks of Xbox or PS2, though I know this. You know, I've seen other people saying the same thing because they're so cheap. You just buy them and buy them and buy them and you end up with a massive pile. Right, so the first one I've got is Batman Rise of Sinzu. Sinzu, I think that's right. And I've not put this in yet, obviously, because I've got too many to play. So I need to have a go. But it looks to be like the usual Batman game where you just run around punching people. So, my kind of game really. And I'm assuming as far as I'm aware this is based on the cartoon series. And yeah, I thought it looked really interesting. I like the cover as well, the cover's really cool. So I thought, why not give it a shot. I've already got Batman Begins, and so I wanted to get the rest of the Batman games. So, I got that for 2 99 from Nuts Entertainment, which I thought, yeah, that's a fair price. So, with that I also got Batman Vengeance, which seems to be the same sort of thing. Only with bigger characters, for the look of it. So yeah, I mean, I look forward, that's a pretty good cover as well actually, that's not too bad that, pretty decent. And I also ordered, unfortunately I also ordered, Batman Dark Tomorrow. Now you can see this is not in the plastic thing that I've got for the reason being, when it arrives, it's got no bloody manual. Now I'm quite annoyed because that's entertainment have been really good, up until recently, where I contacted them twice about this, I said, is there any chance you can give me a refund because it hasn't got the manual and I'll just send the game back to you. And they've totally ignored me, they have not responded to my emails. So I'm very disappointed with their service, it's crap. So the customer service is appalling, they need to sort that out. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, it's really annoying because I don't like the fact that it's got no manual and I can't find a manual on eBay. So I'm a bit frustrated about that. I, I was going to sell it on and just buy another copy with a manual, but honestly, this sells for nothing. Like, I paid 2 99 for it, and that's about the right price. You know, there's people on eBay selling it for 2 99 with postage on top as well. So. Yeah, I wouldn't get enough for it, so I'll probably just hang on to it and try it out. Right, so next one I got is another like mind mind control game. It's called Second Sight. Now I remember playing this when it first came out years ago. Never really got into it. I played it a little bit, but I want to give it another shot because you know, as I say, it was going cheap, and I thought, well, it's from the guys that did Time Splitters as well, so it should be good. You know, free radical, and it does look really decent. I don't remember too much about it, I just remember it was okay when I played it. So I thought, well, why not give it a shot? Yeah, it's another addition to the collection anyway. <laughs> like I ain't got enough already. And next one I've got, now this is really cool, because this was a surprise for me. This was a trilogy of games I wanted to buy for the Xbox for ages. But if you go on eBay, the prices are expensive, so I went to Amazon where you get them for much more reasonable prices. And the first one, guys, is Ninja Turtles. I really like this game. I thought it was going to be a pile of crap. I didn't expect it to be any good at all. It is from Konami though, so that was a good thing. But I, I'll be honest, I played this and I was really surprised how decent it was. It's just like the old Turtles game in, in the sense that you don't get save games, you just get credits. And it's the same thing as Turtles in Time and Hyperstone Heist and the arcade game. And you just run around punching people and hitting them with your weapon. It's brilliant. It's nowhere near as good as Turtles in Time I mean, and the Hyperstone Heist and the arcade game. It's nowhere near that quality, but... It's still a pretty decent game. The only thing I didn't like <laughs> was at the beginning, you get a lot of cutscene at the beginning. And it's like watching an episode of the cartoon. But it's like modern turtles, not the turtles from when I was a kid. And so they've all got these ridiculous... It's, it's as if people in suits wrote a dialogue because it's just so cheesy. And so trying to be like down with the kids kind of thing. I just thought, oh God, what is going on? It was diabolical. But they saved it because the in-game in dialogue is excellent. It was really funny. I was using Michelangelo because I always played him. And some of the stuff he comes out, it made me smile. And it's a pretty damn decent game. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. So I'm glad I bought that. So I bought Turtles. I also bought Ninja Turtles 2 Battle Nexus, which I've not played yet because I need to get to it. And these games are games you can just pop in and play whenever, so I will definitely try it. And the good thing about Battle Nexus, if you can see there, you can unlock the original arcade game, which I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Because I'm hoping they've updated it and they've made it widescreen and everything, and they haven't just ported it straight over as a 4x3 and not upgraded anything. They probably have, but I'm still interested to see what it's like. If it plays as good as the first game, it's going to be epic and I can't wait. 
Now I did also order Turtles 3 uh, Mutant Nightmares it's called I think. And I got that really cheap, which is unusual because that game is really expensive on eBay and Amazon normally. But I found a seller in Wales and they were sending it, it cost me £4.20, £4.29 I think it was, including postage. Which if you know anything about that game, it's bloody cheap. And I was like, wow, brilliant, finally got it. Unfortunately when it arrived, I opened it up and the disc was number two, not number three. And I was gutted, so I said to them, have you got the disc for number three? And I can send the disc for number two back. But they hadn't got the disc, so I had to send the whole thing back and get a refund. Which is frustrating because now number three, uh, on Amazon at the moment there's three copies of it. The cheapest one is £15 plus postage I think it is. I think it's got postage on top. And I haven't checked eBay for a few days but last time I checked there was like one copy and it was like 19 99 I'm not paying that, no way. I know there's a sealed copy on Amazon. Well there's a company selling it, I don't know if they've got one copy or more than one. But they're selling a sealed copy for 21 99 plus shipping. Which, it's a good price but I just think it's a lot of money for a Turtles game. Even though I really, really want it, and sometimes I just think, what's the point of waiting, just buy it. But I know that if I do, I'll see a cheap one, because that one I got for £4. I have seen people sending it for 3 or £4 before on Amazon, so I might just wait and see, and see if someone eventually puts one up. I'll keep checking every day, because you never know. But I really want to get sales free, because number one was excellent. I'm very impressed, and I expect number two to be just as good, and I'm sure number three will be. Because I honestly thought it would be terrible, so I was pleasantly surprised. Right, so next one, guys. Is a game I saw Ninja Bear Hook play a long time ago, and I think it was a GameCube version. But it is this Sphinx the Curse Mummy. I can't speak. Sphinx the, Cur Sphinx the Curse Mummy, that's it. Yeah. And it's a 3D platformer, as far as I'm aware. That's it. it looks fantastic. I mean, graphically, it looks beautiful. And when I saw Ninja Bear Hook's gameplay ages ago, it went on my list to buy because I had to get this. And this was quite pricey as well when you look around. It's, it goes for a decent amount. And I can't remember exactly what I paid for this. It was around about £6 with postage, which I thought was a fair price. I think that's how much it was. I know it was the cheapest copy I could find at the time. And it said like new on Amazon, and it was actually fulfilled for the company through Amazon as well, so it came in proper Amazon postage packaging. And it's in great shape, the disc, the artwork, the manual, everything's spot on. So yeah, that's gonna be another one. And from what I can see, you can switch between characters, between the mummy and the actual Pharaoh character. So yeah, it's, it's gonna be an interesting one to play that, I'm looking forward to that. So I've just got to sit down and just hammer through these because I've got so many now. And next one I got guys, I say I bought a lot, was a sealed copy of Operation Wind Map 2, uh, what's it called, Project Poseidon. Uh, you can see it's got the barcode down the side there. And I got this from Amazon, I think they're still selling these sealed as well, this was like £20, so quite expensive, but it, it's worth it for a sealed copy I think. I didn't even know this game ever existed, I knew Wind Map came out on the N64, but I didn't know they'd made a sequel. And then I saw my good friend Butters, he got this recently on his Xbox, because obviously he's going for a full collection of Xbox, which he's nearly close to doing that. And when he showed this, I was like, oh, that's interesting, I've never heard of that one before. So I had a look, checked it out, and it did look actually pretty damn decent, I thought, on the gameplays I'd seen of it. So I thought I'd go and have a look for it, and I found that copy sealed, so I thought, why not, might as well buy it. Right, okay guys, I can see my battery's about to die, so if you just bear me one second, I'll just change the battery. Hey guys, I'm back, sorry about that. Right, okay, so I've got two more games to show you. And recently what I've been doing, I've been looking at exclusive games for the Xbox from America and Japan to see what was available. Now Japan, I had a look and I had a look around a few different forums to try and get a good list of what games were available. And from the ones I've seen, there were a lot of like you know the usual kind of weird Japanese games that I had no interest in. There were a couple of games that I wanted to buy, but unfortunately they command a high price. One of them was £100, and that seems to be the going rate for it, and I'm not paying that for an Xbox game. Especially one that looks just okay and I want to play it. It'd have to be something special for me to play that, pay that kind of money. But there are three games I want to buy, and I've got two of them here. And there's another one that I want to get, but all of these three games are all around the same price point, and they're quite pricey, so... I'm going to have to wait until I get the third one. The third one I want to get, by the way, is a sequel to Reckless the Yakuza Missions, which I had no idea had ever been made. And I really like the first game, so I want to get hold of that second one and give it a shot. It looks pretty decent. And there are also some American exclusives that I want to pick up as well. There's Kill Switch, which is a bloody brilliant game. Tony Hawk 2X, which years ago when I had an American Xbox, was one of the first games I bought for it, and I love that. It was bloody brilliant. There's also a game I found called Chicago Enforcer, which I've never heard of. And I checked out some gameplay on YouTube, and it's a first-person shooter set in Chicago in 
the I'm never sure, sure is it 20s or 30s? Is it the 30s was the gangster area, wasn't it? I think that's right. But yeah, it's the old gangster type game basically. It looks really, really good. Now graphically and that it looks pretty average and it's probably not gonna be the greatest game, but I like the I like the idea of it, I like the story and you know, I like the setting, so I thought why not? I'll pick that up at some point, it's really cheap. So yeah, I'm gonna aim to get the American exclusives next. But I've got two of my Japanese exclusives that I've been looking forward to getting and I'm really happy because they're absolutely brilliant. So first one I've got guys, now I have, I will say actually, these two are supposed to be Japanese exclusives. I have read on different sites, they did get PAL releases on the Xbox. However, I've looked everywhere on different sites and I can't find anybody selling a PAL release. So I don't know if that's true or not, or if they are actually truly Japanese exclusives. Either way, I don't really care because I've got them there. And as it happens, both of them play in complete English, there's no Japanese text, which is excellent. Not that you need it for these games, because they're easy to understand, but I guess the point's okay. Right, so first one up is a game called Guilty Gear Asuka. And I'll just take it out of this plastic case it came in. So, there you go. It's a really nice artwork on the front of it, I like that. And I played this the other day, and I've got the other Guilty Gear game that came out in the West, which is a really good game. This one, it's good, I like it, but it's very Japanese, it's sort of, um, it's got that, that, that very much that Japanese thing where they have like women in small outfits who smack people with their asses and make giggling noises, which I kind of find a bit uncomfortable sometimes, but yeah, it's very Japanese, but I like it, it's a good game, it seems pretty decent, the music's really cool, graphics are nice on it. And the thing I love about the most, being a fighting game, is that they speak Japanese, which I love fighting games that speak Japanese. I hate fighting games where they have Western speech because it annoys me. Like Street Fighter 4, oh man, the English voices just irritate the hell out of me in that game. I was so glad that you could actually unlock the Japanese language on that game. On, on the PlayStation 3, you could just change it over and it was just brilliant. Because they sound stupid when they've got the stupid English actors. The Japanese was much better. This is complete. Being from Japan, it's immaculate. There's not a mark on a disc. I mean, it's just absolutely fantastic condition. I got both of these games through a company on Amazon called Play Import, I think they were called. And it comes with this as well, which I'm not entirely certain. What the hell? It out of calendar, that was what it was. Yeah, you get a calendar with it. There you go, the artwork there. And reverse, there's some gameplay screenshots. And I mean, it looks brand new, it's all shiny and everything. And there you go, you got a full calendar as well with it. Just pull that back a bit. There you go. So yeah, that's quite a nice touch. I didn't expect to get that with it. But as I say, the game's worth playing. It's well worth a shot. I mean, if you like Guilty Gear games, it's great. And I'm not as good at Guilty Gear as you know I am Street Fighter, but it's still still a really fun game. I enjoyed it. It's just a little bit too Japanese for me, but yeah. So my first Japanese exclusive, which is excellent. Now the second Japanese exclusive I have got is an absolutely brilliant game and I was playing this the other day and I got it and I absolutely love it, it's fantastic and I'll just show you what it is first of all it is Metal Slug 5 a really really cool game you know, I mean, everybody, I think most people on YouTube play Metal Slug games and you know, everybody knows how brilliant they are this one's really cool, I really like, like the music's great, the graphics are awesome the level design is fantastic, the vehicles are spot on, it's just so much fun I die a lot playing Metal Slug because my reactions aren't as good as they used to be when I was a kid, but I just enjoy it so much. It's just brilliant. It's just so good to just kick back and just blast away. And the cover's excellent. If you just see the artwork there, that bloody reflection doesn't do it. There you go. Get the glare out. It's really nice. Yeah, no, I, when I was looking at this game, as I say, I heard there's a PAL release and I've not been able to find one yet. I know in America that you can get a dual release of Metal Slug 4 and Metal Slug 5 in one case. Which I was also tempted to buy just as a variation, but I just thought, what's the point? I've got three and four on PAL. I've now got five on NTSC, so there's not really any point in buying that four and five combo, other than to just be a complete completionist. And I don't, I don't know. Part of me really wants to, but part of me says, don't waste your money, even though it's only a couple of dollars, but still. <laughs> but yeah, really cool. I love this game. Uh, very happy to have that in the collection. So I've got all the Metal Slug games now, so I'm really happy. As far as I'm aware, only 3, 4 and 5 were released on Xbox. So yeah, as I say, I've brought quite a lot of Xbox stuff. I've been you know, stacking them up. And I've gone over 200 games now, so I'm really happy with that. It's brilliant. So I've just got to basically sit down and play them now. I've obviously got all those to play. I've got my Super Nintendo games to play. You know, I've got a lot to play, so I'm just cutting, 
Cutting back on the Xbox now, I'm still buying the Super Nintendo stuff of course, because you know, that's my aim and I want to get that collection up high. But other than that, it's all good. So yeah. So I hope you enjoy that guys. Looking forward to your comments and hearing what you think of any of those games, you know. Anyone you'd recommend me playing next, what you think's the best. So yeah, great. Well thanks for watching. As always, I'll see you all again soon.